West Virginia University and the West Virginia University Athletic Department, we warmly welcome you here inside the Coliseum for a very special day as we formally introduce the 23rd head men's basketball coach in West Virginia University history. Please welcome Darren DeVries. And so obviously this is a first. It's your first opportunity to hear from Coach, and it's Coach's first opportunity to see Mountaineer Nation in force. Obviously he has heard about Mountaineer Nation, he has seen Mountaineer Nation from afar, and today begins that relationship that we hope lasts for many, many years. Our program, quite simple today, in just a moment we'll hear from our athletic director, Ren Baker. We will also hear from Darren and then we will open it up to general media questions. So once again, on behalf of the university, we welcome you all. Please now welcome Vice President and Athletic Director of West Virginia University, Mr. Ren Baker. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. I want to begin thanking uh, you for coming to the formal introduction of our next men's basketball coach, Darren DeVries. Our fans and supporters are the reason that WU Athletics has been successful and our basketball program will continue to thrive because of your passion and support. I want to take a moment to give special thanks to the staff members that assisted with our search process, Natasha Oaks, Ben Murray, Steve Urias, Brian Messerly, and Mike. Please give them a round of applause. I also want to President Gordon Gee, General Counsel Stephanie Taylor, our Board Chair Tanya Willis-Miller, and Vice Chair Rick Peel for being available for discussions as we process the alignment and was very critically important as we conducted this search. It's an honor to welcome Coach DeVries' family here tonight. And so I'd like to uh, ask his wife, his his daughter Tatum, and she's hiding somewhere. But Ashley's mother is here somewhere. So if you see uh, Deb, please uh, give her some. Today, a celebration. Tony, 
could be a good time for you to do. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's go. One, two. Is that better? We were about to have Tony start singing karaoke. I've heard it. You don't want that. Today is a day of celebration. We continue to celebrate our history and tradition as one of the top 20 winningest basketball programs of all time while eagerly looking forward to the future. We're celebrating the name of our 23rd head men's basketball coach. In a few minutes, you'll hear from coach, but I want to take a moment to talk about the process. But before we do that, I know we have three of our current players sitting here. Could all of our current and former players uh, in the room please stand? Thank you, guys. We had tremendous interest from candidates all over the country in our program. To lead a head coaching search as an AD, and I've participated in several more as in other roles. The interest in this position was as great as any other search that I've executed. What we heard from candidates is the passion of the fans, the resources we provide, our facilities, our history, and our tradition, as well as the quality and depth of the Big 12 made this job very desirable. As I outlined before we began, we had some qualities we desired in our next head coach. We wanted someone who understands and will embrace West Virginia values and what WVU is all about. The passion, the work ethic, the grit, resiliency, determination that makes us mountaineers. Someone who was committed to building championship programs on the court, but building leaders off the court. Someone who can demonstrate a knowledge and a plan of navigating the complexity of college athletics today and running a basketball program in the world of the portal and name, image, and likeness. We wanted someone that we can be proud of and who can embrace the role of not just representing this program, but representing an entire state. Finally, we wanted someone who would entrench themselves in West Virginia. This is a great place to live and work. It's a privilege to represent Mountaineer Nation, and we felt it was important for our next head coach and their family to put down roots and embrace this state and community. While we vetted and considered many candidates, one candidate stood above the others. Coach DeVries is a winner. He won big as an assistant at Creighton for two different head coaches before taking over a Drake program that had struggled to find consistency for decades. Drake has played basketball for 118 seasons. They've had 11 seasons where they won at least 20 games. Six of those occurred during his six years as head coach. In those 118 seasons, Drake has made seven NCAA tournaments. Three of those occurred during his six years as head coach. Over its history, Drake has won 47% of its games. Coach won 73% of his games during his six years. So 5% of the seasons coached, 55% of their winning seasons, and over 40% of their NCAA appearances. So it's clear we hired a winner. But while he's won big, he's done so with integrity. The most amazing stat on Darren is that in 23 years, he's only been at two places. So I have these spreadsheets on candidates, and there's columns for where they've been. His is the only one that didn't fill the columns up. He was at Dra Creighton for 17 years as an assistant and Drake for six. He's amazingly loyal and showed, showed maturity to not just chase the next job. He invests in people. He's a positive person with positive energy, he's a hard worker. And he was drawn not just to Mountaineer basketball, but to Morgantown in the state of West Virginia. He's done his homework, he knew about the culture here, he knew about our values, and he made it clear that he didn't just want a job, he wanted this job. 
And that was backed up by what I was hearing from other people in and around college athletics as he was giving cold shoulders to those other schools that were engaging him. He's a devoted husband and father. You had a chance to meet his family. I talked to former players, coaches that coached with him, for him, and against him, administrators, and even referees. All three of, the, of those groups raved about him as a coach, but even more as a person. Even the referees. Coach, that's not really a mountaineer tradition. To, <laughs> as you saw Monday night, about to get us. So I, I said, said uh, this in the interview process, but the referees are always out to get the mountaineers. And he said he was going to text me and tell me we were in a bad whistle, but he didn't want me to think I was a coach. That, yeah, he was a coach that always dropped about rest. So. All of those conversations and qualities were important as we uh, searched to find a leader that could rally our fan base, represent our state and our tradition. During the interview process, it was clear to us that he was the perfect candidate for West Virginia. So please join me in welcoming our next head coach and the newest member of the Mountaineer family, Darren DeVries. Thank you all. Uh, wow. Thank you uh, for being my, uh, my family. Sometimes you got go to go to plan B. So, um, you were better at this. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. Halftime adjustments. Uh, yeah, I want to start out. Um, I want to thank uh, President Gee and uh, Athletic Director Ren Baker here for this unbelievable opportunity. Um, as a side note, uh, we have the AD with the best shoe game in the country. There's no question. Uh, and uh, we, we will work on mine because uh, it does need some work. But uh, I understand the responsibility uh, of being the men's basketball coach here at West Virginia. Uh, and we will do everything we can uh, to make you proud. Uh, and as the things we, um, uh, that Ren mentioned, uh, we're going to do it with integrity. Uh, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to work hard. Um, everything um, that makes, uh, makes you proud uh, to represent um, us and vice versa, we will do that back to you. Uh, I also want to uh, go backwards a little bit. I want to I thank Drake University, uh, President Martin, uh, the Director of Athletics, Brian Harden, uh, all my former players, uh, and the Des Moines community for their incredible support of, of myself and my family and our staff over the uh, six years that I was there. Uh, I feel incredibly uh, fortunate and unbelievably proud of, of uh, had the opportunity to coach so many young men uh, who represented their university and their community in a first-class manner. Uh, Drake will always be uh, a part of my family uh, and something we'll be uh, forever grateful for our time there. Uh, the most important people, though, I want to thank today uh, is my family. Um, my wife of, of 26 years, uh, happy 26 years, I think, I, I think most of it at least. Uh, 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 she's an unbelievably um, uh, supportive wife to me. And, uh, um, you know, we've enjoyed our time over the 26 years. Uh, we've, we've traveled this journey together uh, arm in arm, and um, uh, I can't be more proud to, to call her my wife. Uh, and I know Ren introduced her you know, before, but my wife Ashley sitting right here in the front row. Thank you. <clears throat> she, 
She's also uh, uh, given me two incredible children, uh, my daughter Tatum, who is a freshman in high school right now. If you'd stand up, Tatum, one more time, just give a big, big round of applause. Maybe, maybe the kindest hearted, sweetest girl I know, um, uh, and, and very proud of her. Uh, also have my son Tucker, uh, if he could stand up. <clears throat> Um, who will be joining us for his senior year. So, yeah. It's always nice uh, when you get your first recruit. Uh, so I had to work hard this morning to get that one done. Uh, but, but we are all incredibly ecstatic uh, to be here, uh, to be a part of this community, uh, and, and cannot wait to meet everyone on, on a first-hand basis uh, because this was a family decision. Uh, it was a decision that as, as we got into it, it was an easy decision uh, because of everybody here uh, in the community here. Uh, in the 24 hours that we've been here, less than 24 hours, it shines through uh, what this community is all about. And, and the way we've been embraced already, uh, we cannot wait to uh, continue from day one on uh, to ingrain ourselves in this community. Um, I feel very fortunate. I've been, uh, as, as Ren had mentioned, I worked at two terrific institutions, 20 years at Creighton University uh, and Drake University. Uh, I was incredibly blessed to work for two of the greatest coaches in the game, or two of the greatest coaches in Dana Altman and Greg McDermott. I'm forever grateful for their influence on me uh, as both a coach and a person. Um, they are simply two of the best. Um, you know, when you, when you get into coaching, and that uh, you know, was 26 years ago for me, uh, and I started out with Dane Altman and Greg McDermott, uh, they teach you it's more than just about teaching basketball, and that's maybe the thing that I've taken away over my time there with them. Uh, it, it's more than basketball. It's about people. It's about developing people, uh, and I can't wait to continue to do that here at West Virginia. Um, now my journey is, has taken me here to Morgantown the 20th all-time winningest program in the NCAs. What an incredible and proud tradition we have here. A basketball program that has been to 31 NCAA tournament appearances, 11 Sweet 16s, three Elite Eights, two Final Fours. To have that kind of success, you have to have terrific coaches and players that have paved the way. Coach Catlett, Coach Beeline, and Coach Huggins just incredible what they have done here and the success they have had. Players such as Jerry West, Rod Hunley, and Rob Thorne, um, and the many, many other players, uh, too many to recognize individually because I would leave, uh, leave it out and, and it would take too long, but too many other players that, that have represented this program at a very high level. Needless to say, this program knows winning. As many of you know, the landscape of college basketball and college athletics has changed significantly with the transfer portal and NIL. Uh, our staff, as, as we continue to uh, put our staff together, will embrace the new era. Uh, we understand the new era of college basketball, and we will certainly do everything we can to roll with that. Uh, with the help and support of our partnership with the Country Roads Trust and all those who uh, generously support it, support it, many of you in this room, uh, we will remain one of the premier programs in the country, especially when you think about filling this place with the Mountaineer Maniacs, a few of who I met uh, here this morning, and the 14,000 fans that will be filling this up every night. I'd like to take a couple of minutes just to talk about uh, what you can expect from our teams you know, as we move forward and the staff we will put together. Uh, first off, from a staff perspective, um, uh, we will continue to put that together here in the um, upcoming days and weeks. Uh, you know, as we work through HR and those type of things, uh, we hope to have a staff in place as soon as possible uh, so we can continue to uh, get out on the road during a very important uh, recruiting period. Uh, from a, from a, a player standpoint, uh, we will continue to work hard again uh, this upcoming spring and summer as, as I get an opportunity to meet with the current players and then also as we go out and find uh, prospective student athletes uh, for their future here at West Virginia. The goal being to be 
again, as strong as we can from a staff perspective to make sure that we can cover all regions of the country and from a player perspective uh, that we will <clears throat> continue to get, uh, recruit uh, young men that will re represent our program in a way that um, we all want to be represented, both on and off the floor. Uh, we will look for young men um, that have talent with intangibles. Uh, I am a firm believer if you stack talent and intangibles and you do that enough times and you put together a group of men like that in a locker room, that equates to winning. And we will have a locker room filled with winners. And, and winners just aren't about necessarily scoring baskets. They have a discipline, a toughness, and a selfishness that stands tall in all situations. And we will teach them to apply those to all phases of their life. Uh, when they leave here, we don't want them to leave here just as good basketball players. Uh, we want them to leave here as great men. In close, I'll say this. Uh, the, incredible uh, trend, excuse me, the incredible tradition uh, and passionate fan base is what makes this so pl place so special. You are what makes this place so special. Our alumni and our former players are what make this, pla this place so special. We are all in this together. We win together, we lose together. We want you to feel that every day and know that our success is going to be because of your incredible and generous support. When you talk to coaches around the country, they talk about what an electric atmos atmosphere it, here. It, 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 it is here and what a tough place to play it is. I hope that they haven't seen anything yet. I hope that we can take this up another decimal level. Our goal is to make sure every opponent leaves here with some pepperoni rolls and the words of Country Roads echoing in their head. Let's go, Mountaineers. Thank you very much, Darren. We will open it up now to questions from the media. And I'll point you out, we have Olivia and Ferris who are going to walk with the microphones. And we'll get those out here, and someone can fire away. Coach Hunter, you want to go first? Bark it out. Well, I'm sorry. Here comes Olivia right now. Thank you. Coach Greg Hunter, Blue and Gold News. So biggest challenges for you? I mean, it's probably not good for a mid-major coach to say it's, you know, it, what's a power level conference, but what is the biggest challenge for a coach in moving up to a different level? Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge as you, as you um, change, change leagues in general is just learning the league. Um, you know, I, I grew up um, in, big, in, the, in the Midwest with the Big 12, the old Big 8, so certainly I have a great understanding of the league, know many of the coaches in the league. Uh, so as you continue to, now, now it's just about, you know, Getting staff put together, uh, you know, continuing to build on your, your roster and, and putting that together. Uh, but at the end of the day, basketball is still basketball. Um, things that matter for winning, you know, matter for winning at every level. And and we certainly, um, you know, we'll we'll put together a team that we feel like um, can be successful in in the areas that we want them to be successful. They fit together. Um, it's it's not about just. You know, necessarily collecting talent. It's about putting together a team, and we'll certainly work hard to do that here over these next few days and weeks. You mentioned roster. You got a few players here now, but uh, I mean, it, when you meet with them, when you start to make some decisions on what you need, maybe some of that's already started. Yeah, we'll, we will. Uh, we'll be meeting, or I'll, I'll get the opportunity to meet with the um, you know individuals on the roster right now and, and get a feel for for their plans and, and our plans, and, and we'll communicate that uh, uh, you know with with which each individual on the on the roster. Uh, so excited to do that, uh, and then obviously um, you know we'll continue to build um, you know to you know fill some of the the needs with the, the seniors that are are leaving the program and, and um, you know anyone else. Coach Michael Sussman, WMOV. What's the what's the sale uh, to the talent trying to, to pair them with the guys that are going to be here? Yeah, I think it's uh, as as we you mentioned. There's unbelievable tradition here. Uh, there's a, a great history here. There's a lot to sell. Uh, unbelievable, um, you know, fan base, passion. It's uh, there's so much about this program uh, that sells itself. So when you go out and in in the, in the 
few short days here, it's, it's already been an easy sell. Uh, people are interested. They want to be a part of it. Uh, um, they love our style of play. Uh, so, um, you know, for us, that, that's, it's just continuing to sell that aspect of it um, because there is so much to sell from a tradition and a fan standpoint. Coach, Mike Ostey with WV Sports Now. Can you tell those who maybe don't know more about your style of play and from what you of it does appear from what we know that it might be different than, than your style of play in the conference you've been in. So how you think it will adjust and maybe in your mind what adjustments might need to be made to, to win a Big 12 championship uh, to add it to your yeah, the style of play, uh, the Big 12 is obviously a, a very defensive-oriented league. It's a very physical league. The, uh, the Missouri Valley uh, has had a lot of that as well. It's just a different different level of physicality. Uh, so there's no question that in order to be successful in the, in the Big 12, you have to defend. You have to be, be able to rebound. You have to have some phys physicality to you. Your team has to have some toughness. Um, we will recruit to that. We will coach to that. We will teach that. Uh, and then on the, you know, from a philosophy standpoint, how do you win games? Or, uh, you have to take care of the ball. You have to defensive rebound. You have to guard. Those three things, they, 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 that's just that's winning. And if you can do those three areas well, um, you have a chance to win every single night. So we will try to do that. Offensively, um, it starts with getting stops. But once we, once we get the ball, I think when you reach out and you talk to people in our league, the thing they fear the most is our transition game. And that has to come off of getting defensive stops. Uh, you know, it's not something we talk about every day, it's something we do every day. If you come watch us practice, we're going to practice transition. We're, our goal is to store, score in the first 12 seconds of every possession. Because if you can score against a, a, a broken defense, it, it gives you opportunity to score uh, a lot better chance. And, and that's what we're going to try to do. It's what we'll emphasize every single day. Um, you know, teams in this league, they go offensive rebound. So you have to make them pay for doing that and you have to get bodies on people you have to be physical and then once you get it you have to get out and transition and run coach uh ethan bach of west virginia sports now just kind of in this newer era i mean we're acclimated a little bit now but just how do you navigate the transfer portal and then how do you find a balance between what you're looking for in a high school recruit compared to a transfer recruit yeah, what we're looking for is we, we want players that want to be at West Virginia. Uh, we want players that want to be here because they want to uh, be a part of what we have here, this fan base, this community, uh, this school. Uh, they want to be a part of our program, uh, and they want to be here for all the right reasons and, and embrace that. Uh, from a, a, a portal and a high school um, perspective, uh, we will do a combination of both. Uh, you know, five years ago, I think you you – you were 80%, you know, high school, and, and now that's changed just a little bit. Uh, that's just the world. You have to evolve with it from a recruiting standpoint. Uh, so the portal is incredibly important. The spring recruiting period is important. Um, but we're also not losing sight of we want to continue to build from within, um, you know, find um, very talented uh, you know, high school players that, that, that want to be here and fit this and then retain them and have them have a great experience during the course of their career here. Um, my question is for Ren. Uh, I'm just wondering when you look at a lot of the recent hires uh, among D1 schools, Louisville, uh, Michigan, they've all gone the same market, going to the lower mid-major schools. Uh, what drew you to looking at smaller schools for a coach, and what do you think has created that trend for the other schools to also go the, the same way? Yeah, I, you know, I, I never, I try never to lock in on any certain profile. I think you're looking at a variety of, of um, boxes that you're trying to check. But I do think when you talk about the depth and quality of the Big 12, there's some great, great coaches in this league. And um, there's a certain risk when you take somebody who hasn't been a head coach um, just because there are lessons that you can only learn from sitting in that chair. And so I've hired assistant coaches uh, over
over the course of time, but but I do think um, it helps when you have a, a somebody who's had head coaching experience. Um, and I got great respect for the Missouri Valley. The Missouri Valley is a great, great league. Um, it you can go back in time and see a lot of postseason and, and success and history and tradition um, in that conference. Um, and I have a lot of respect for the job that um, that coach did at, at Drake. I, I know what that job was when he took it over. And uh, it was not a very good job, and he's turned it into a good job. It's a much more attractive job today. So in my mind, um, that's what made him the best candidate. We looked at a lot of different people and profiles. Um, but um, I, I think he, he, he is the one that uh, checked all of the boxes that we were looking for. You mentioned Coach Catlett and John Beeline and Bob Huggins there in the open. Have you gotten a chance to talk to any of those guys? And just what was your perception of WVU over the years? Well, Brayton. Yeah, I, I got a chance to uh, reach out to all three of them. Um, so, um, you know, got a couple on the phone, uh, exchanged some text messages. So, um, you know, certainly um, was excited to get their input uh, in, in, about the program and, and the success they've had here. And sorry, I didn't um, I didn't get the second part of that uh, question. Just kind of like during WVU's runs of success over the years while you were at Creighton or at Drake, just what were your thoughts? Were they on your radar, West Virginia? Yeah, the, the success is, um, I mean, it speaks for itself. And unfortunately, some of their success came at our expense uh, about 19 years ago. I was I was talking to uh, Gansey about uh, they had beaten us Creighton at the time in the NCAA tournament in a very close game. There's a couple controversial calls there, but um, they um, um, so it, you know I followed their success as, as as a sports fan, so you know all about that. Obviously, and then playing it firsthand, uh, you know what this program is and and um, you know what it can be. Didn't know all the the ins and outs until you know really started digging into it, and it was like. This is an unbelievable situation. Um, you know, there's so many things here that that are in place, um, and the guy sitting right here is uh, is a big part of that too. I, I think he has an unbelievable vision for what what this program is and what it can become, and I'm certainly excited to to work side by side with him as we continue to um, you know go down that road. And so now that you brought it up, i, I got to ask you about that NCAA tournament game. Uh, Nate Funk didn't call you, tell you not to take this job, not to have anything to do with West Virginia. What are your memories uh, of that moment in Cleveland? Well, he should have made the shot, first of all. It was, I think it was actually on Gansey. Um, he, he didn't really close out properly, I didn't think, so we, we certainly had a chance there. But, um, yeah, no, they, uh, the – it's funny we joke about it. I, I told him there's kind of a 20-year statute of, lip, uh, of limitations, and we're not there yet, so I haven't quite forgiven him. I got one more year yet to hold a grudge about that loss. I hang on to him a little lot longer than most people, but we're getting closer. Uh, Coach, uh, Mike Ostegan with WV Sports now. You obviously won a lot at Drake, and you kind of started winning – right away this program despite a rich history is coming off of a season most fans probably would like to forget what kind of expectations do you want fans to kind of have i mean obviously fans are, are having dreams of right back in the ncaa tournament ren talks a lot about building a program to stay in success is that something in this era you think is reasonable what kind of expectations do you have what is a path for you to to build a program over the long haul here yeah from a from a wins and losses standpoint I, I don't think you can go into into it and say hey we're going to do this or that i, I think uh, the wins and losses um, we want them to be more on the on on the win side this this upcoming year uh, but it still has to be about the process um, and making sure that we don't sacrifice that to to bring in you know players that don't fit us or or, or or don't match what we want to, to build this program. Um, if it if it plays out that way, that um, you know we can be as, as successful as possible and, and competing near the top, then great. But we will not sacrifice anything from a culture standpoint, um, in, in any way, shape, or form, in, in 
in terms of just filling a roster. We're going to find the right guys that want to be here, um, want to be at West Virginia, want to be a part of uh, a winning culture, um, you know, a team culture. And at the end of the day, uh, I believe those wins will come. We hope they come sooner than later. Uh, but that's what we're going to stick to in, in terms of the plan. Coach John Raby with the Associated Press. You heard the place get charged up when you mentioned Tucker. Uh, what does it mean to you personally that he's going to be with you here? Yeah, I, I, you know, the last three years, uh, you know, I've had an opportunity to, to, to coach your son. That's, um, you know, something in, in this profession you miss so much as they're growing up uh, that, um, you know, whether it be weekend tournaments or whatever. So the last three years, uh, just from, you know, from a dad perspective, I get a lot of that back and get to spend some day-to-day -day time. Uh, now, during practice and during games, he, he's back to player, um, and I'm back to coach. So he, he probably gets mad at me, and I get mad at him a little bit. But we've enjoyed this ride together and, and um, you know, can't wait uh, for this this opportunity you know during his last year um, you know for him to um, you know go out there and compete uh, you know with his, with his new teammates and 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 just just love everything that there is you know about this place about this program um, and and competing with with um, you know guys that all have the same ambitions and that's to you know being a bring a big 12 championship here to West Virginia Coach John Antonic, WVSports.com. I noticed in your bio, your brothers all played football. What happened? Yeah, yeah. You run them off the court? I've, I've asked the same things. Um, yeah, I would say they beat, they beat me to the mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, you know, I got left with, with the scraps. So, uh, yeah, I have, a, I, have a, I have a football family, um, and, uh, um, you know, I had to go a different route. I was, I was like 140 pounds coming out of high school, so there, this was a better path for me. So serious note um you had other opportunities obviously and there's still jobs open what made this job uh, appealing as opposed to those other opportunities that you had you know i said this said this a lot and i know ren mentioned it i, I spent 20 years at creighton university uh, because that was that was the place um, that i loved that was a place my family loved and i wasn't going to leave you know creighton university for just any job at the time and I wanted the right one uh, when I got my first head coaching um, job, and uh, to me that was Drake University, and, and a place that I wanted to be. Uh, I felt like um, uh, there was a vision there, there was a plan there, uh, and then I spent the last six years there, and it was it was incredible. And I know when I took the job, I said it would take something pretty special. I'm from Iowa, I grew up in the Midwest. It was going to take something special um, to have me leave there, and. You know, when I talk to Ren and, and talk to people that know this program and this place and, and the people here, um, everything about it made sense to me, made sense to my family, that this was a place that um, we could see ourselves at for a very, very long time, a, a place that we felt we could um, enjoy as a family, enjoy as a basketball coach, uh, enjoy being a part of this community. And, and uh, obviously, Ren is, it was a big part of that, too. Uh, I, I don't... I mean this when I say that I don't think there's there's many better out there, and uh, not just because of his shoe game, but he's uh, he's he's a, he's got an incredible passion and vision for this place, and and we believe in it. Uh, Darren, I'm Mike. I work for 24/7 Sports. Um, could you explain just the low turnover you've had and the number of transfers out? in a timer that's just increasingly popular. Yeah, we've, we've had success at Drake uh, with, with retaining uh, players. Um, you know, my hope is uh, that, that uh, we have that same success here. I think a lot of that has to do with that they enjoyed their time um, within our program. They, they could have left, they could have taken more money, they could have gone to other places to, for something new, but they wanted to continue to finish out their careers and be a part of, um, you know, a team and a program that they love being at. And that's my goal here as well, is, is we want, you know, student athletes that, that love it here, just just love being here. Uh, this is the place for them and, and want to continue to, um, you know, finish their careers here. Anyone else? All right. Very good. That'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, West Virginia head coach Darren DeVries.
So before we go away here, as you alluded to and as Ren alluded to, when the game ends in victory here at West Virginia, there is the Plain of Country Roads, which is one of the great traditions and one of the great highlights. As we begin to make our way out, first the pep band with the WV fight song and then Country Roads to send it off. And Darren will be around for a little bit. So a little bit of a meet and greet. Thanks, everyone, for being with us here. And let's go, Mountaineers. Thank you.